during these monetary transitions is a war. And we've been leading up to, and some believe that we have already entered World War III. But what's going on with what the public sees? And that's how Biden's shock and awe tactic is failing to stop Russia. Because the way we hear it, we think everybody is in agreement but what the world is also seeing is that the U.S. is using these sanctioning tools more and more and more. We are becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger bully. So, you know, this I think is also creating a divide. But look at, the, you know, you can really see it growing. This goes back to 2001 you know, and from 2009 to 16, more sanctions than certainly from 17 to 20. And phew, I mean, that's what the world is seeing because this is new U.S. sanction designations by year. But wow, Russia is just chugging right along. And what is their answer? Meaning those in power when something doesn't work, why not just double down? I mean, we certainly saw it with the money printing, right? And we're starting to feel the impacts of that with the inflation. And also, what, what do people, what do other countries see when, when the U.S. uses sanctions to try and lock countries out of the financial system to hamper and control their economies? I mean, frankly, I think it pardon me, pisses countries off. And they go, well, wait a minute, if they're gonna do it there, what happens if they don't like what I've done? So I think that battle lines are being drawn. And I think that, uh, I definitely do think we've already started World War III. And I think that that's really more in, to be honest with you, in cyberspace. But, but for the public, we need boots on the ground war. We need something that people can see and say, oh, we're in war. So who's on board? In early March 22, the UN General Assembly passed a motion condemning Russian aggression against Ukraine, but some 35 member states abstained. Battle lines are being drawn. Now, these the light blue are those that have abstained. If it's got a gray, they haven't voted this is known, of course, that's Russia in, in there, so would be expected. But China abstained, right? So, no, we are in a race here. And the reason why Biden's shock and awe didn't have an impact is because Russia found new suppliers of their high-tech goods, imports, but also for their oil, etc. So, and who stepped in? Hmm, China. Well, that's not a very big surprise. So you have Russia and China that have a very strong relationship and they've gotten more and more integrated. Who is behind China? Who's stepping in with them? Well, Russia, look at the Russian economy. Yes, it really dumped in the beginning of the attack, but now it's been doing much better as it's found alternatives for both their imports as well as their exports. Now Yellen warns that China warns China that helping Russia will bring serious consequences. And we've been poking that bear for a long time. And remember, China is autocratic, so they don't really need as much the support of the population. Not only have we been clear with the Chinese government. We've also made it clear to Chinese firms and to Chinese banks that we would not tolerate trade deals that helped Russia to evade sanctions. We will crack down and enforce our sanctions and the consequences will be very severe. Who will those consequences, those se severe consequences actually end up with? That would be the public and the population. I mean, U.S. won't tolerate deals to help Russia evade sanctions and the G7, the U.S. to impose fresh sanctions one year after invasion. So there, it's not working, 
but let's just do more of it. And by the way, let us really get into a position where we are even making greater enemies. We will crack down and enforce our sanctions and the consequences to China and also India will be very severe. And I'm, I'm just wondering what those consequences are going to be. Because not only have we been clear with China itself, but everybody else. And in the meantime, you know, my father's saying, do what I say and not what I do, which frankly never made sense to me, but it has really set me up because I watch what they say. So we can arm Ukraine and, but they haven't, you know, they haven't slowed. We have not slowed the flow of weapons to Taiwan, which is a big bone of contention. As you might recall, when Nancy Pelosi went to Taiwan against China's protests. So we can do whatever we want, but we're going to tell you what you have to do. You think that works very well? You think that everybody just goes, oh, okay. No, I don't think so. Thank you for that lesson. Because while the central banks don't want you to buy gold, they're buying at the highest level in 57 years. What does that tell you? And in the meantime, again, those battle lines, Russia, South Africa, China, to simulate air attacks in an exercise. Isn't that interesting that they're coming together? I'm sure it's just a coincidence. What do you think? The exercises known as Moshi 2 have been criticized by some South Africans' biggest trade partners, the trade partners, including the U.S. and the European Union, who have questioned the timing of the exercises, which take place one year after Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine. Those countries have already been irked by South Africa's abstention from United Nations resolutions. So they're one of the 35 countries. I'm telling you, make no mistake, battle lines are being drawn. We are already in World War III. In the meantime, we've got the threat of nuclear war on top of us. We were ha- ahead of us. You know, we've watched that with the nuclear reactors and the nu- nuclear power plants in Ukraine and uh, North Korea, but, and Iran. Putin halts nuke pact with U.S. and vows to push war in Ukraine. Putin said Russia will suspend its observation of the New START treaty with the U.S., dealing a blow to the last accord, limiting their nuclear arsenals. I don't know about you. Are you surprised by this? Because I'm not. I mean, you keep pushing people in countries. You know, you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. You're going to get pushback. No shocker. But what happens if this actually turns into a nuclear war? And that can even happen. A nuclear war can happen in cyberspace and you won't even see it until it's too late. A lot of things can happen. You need to be very cautious. You need to be in a position to be as self-sufficient as possible. Because frankly, right here, this is the biggest enemy, China, Russia, but also, like I said, I mean, you don't hear too much about India, but India has stepped in as well as China has for Russia's imports, exports to help them around the sanctions. So you have some very uh, powerful alliances on that end as well. China's relations with Russia are rock solid as rock. China's top diplomat said during his visit, visit to Moscow as the two neighbors pledged broader strategic cooperation and coordination amid their escalating tensions with the West. You ready? Oil sales to China have hit their highest level since the invasion of Ukraine and their gold imports from Russia surged 750% last July. 
So we can see that China's actions do indeed support their words. We also see when they don't. And, and by that, I'm meaning we see what the central banks say, but we also see what the central banks do. And I'm telling you, it matters. It's a level of integrity, but it's also how you know, are, are what they saying true? Or are what they saying a lie? When their actions do not support their words, you know it's a lie. It really is that simple. And how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth?